Overthinking is like losing your virginity by accident. That doesn't make any sense. Well, how about this one? Losing your parking ticket. But dude, just because two things suck doesn't mean it's a good analogy. What's a good analogy for overthinking? Overthinking is like a hamster frantically running on a wheel, stuck in a never-ending loop, wasting energy, going nowhere. Where could we go in life if we stopped getting stuck in our heads and just violently took action toward our goals? Let's explore some ways to do that, but it may not be what you want to hear. Thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. This is the second video in our 90 day goal series in which we, the Driven Community, help each other achieve the goals that we wish we had achieved this year. We just set some challenging goals in the last episode and now doubt creeps in. Who here struggles with overthinking? And my friend Brad has been struggling with this for over four years. So while we're all together at a creator conference this week, I decided to confront him about it. We made it to Dallas. I feel like I'm in the casting coach right now. I don't know what that is. I just Googled it five minutes ago. You shook hands on $5,000. One video every three weeks. How five much? grand? That's literally my entire bank account. Yes. How's the house posting going? How's video? Uh, I mean, there's something that I want to do. And then I think of all the possible things that could go wrong, make it perfect before I even like do something. What if that happens? And it'll just like constantly just be going in this loop. Had a channel for four years and I've only made, I think like 40 something videos. Sometimes like six month break with no posting. In those six months, I never felt like I was like relaxing or anything. I felt like I was always working, but it, well, realistically what that was just, I was always thinking. Three month break, and a four month break. And then I feel like it just prevents me from living life as a whole, everyday life satisfaction. He's one of the most lively and loving people I know, but he has a very critical mind that sometimes sends him down a spiral where he only sees what's wrong. And um, if you wouldn't do anything about this, what would happen? I don't know, there's a few times in the past year where like I would never ever commit suicide or anything, mm -hmm. but uh, I understood why somebody would. You got us, man. Yeah. We wouldn't let you get anywhere close to that. I see a lot of the parts of myself in you. I wish Brad could have seen me seven, eight years ago because he only knows me as, <sighs> but I was like I was possessed by a demon. Anything I looked at was through this lens of people are selfish, life equals suffering, the world is unfair, and that's all I could see at the time. I was just starting my first business, consumed in doubt and worry, and I hit a point where I knew I couldn't keep going like this. And I stumbled upon this mind experiment that was supposed to train your brain to develop new automatic thoughts. It was one of the hardest but most rewarding things I've done in my life. A complete shift in reality. I've repeated it so many times to the point where now a lot of these thoughts are automatic. Jake told me recently, you are the most positive person I know. And it was a big epiphany for me because I was like, man, I dug myself out of that. Yeah, I wanted to invite you to this challenge. Would you be down to to join? No, I'd be 100% down to join. The rules are simple. For a few days, any thought you have, you try to spin it into the most positive, optimistic, empowering perspective that you can imagine. Like you stub your toe, hey, this is great because it gets me present into the moment. Wow, I'm so glad I didn't stub both my toes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't lie, be realistic, but find what's great about something. I know it sounds dumb, it probably is, but it works. You're literally forming new connections in your brain until they're so strong that they become automatic. Oftentimes we try to get out of overthinking by thinking more. And here you just cut it off. Let's do this for the next two days. We'll check in again tonight, see how we go. And also let's call each other out. Let's do it. Can I quickly uh, upload some footage? Sure. How's the footage? Um, we'll figure something out. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not the best, but it's, uh, it is better than having no footage at all. No internet. That's great. No. Because. Oh yes, that's so good because then it's going to force us to go and not be lost in work. My shirt is kind of wrinkly. But you know what? People will look at us and be like, that's a very approachable guy. Can't do this, man. I can't. You have to. I've been good doing this for five minutes. It's already uh, good. It's, it's teaching me discipline. There's going to be points where it's going to be really challenging. When you get triggered about something, let's say you get a message from your ex-girlfriend, you make a dumb joke, nobody laughs. There's people. What do we do? Uh, we smile and we wave and we say hello to everyone we see. Channel's declining. That's me. Having a hard time paying the bills. Oh. 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 Look who's here. This nerd <laughs> survived. <laughs> Sorry, that's the title that worked. 
How have you been with the, the challenge? Good. I'm really tired right now. And? How am I supposed to turn that into a positive? Did you know that when you're tired, you're actually more receptive to new information? That's good. Also, so you make more friends by being more open and receptive. That's why we go out at night. Because we're just like, more easy going, relax. Yeah. I like it. And then Hunter started bragging about his new iPhone 15. It completely stabilizes it. Wow, I wish I had. <laughs> I know. I'm happy with the phone that I have. I think your phone sucks. See the negativity? You gotta fuck plow through that. Tell me something that's better about this one that's actually genuinely better than the only thing I can think of is it's cheaper. You're not that worried about dropping it. He's like not even using it because he's scared of calm down. I kind of want your phone now. Do you want to trade phones? You're really liking that phone aren't you Brad? Oh, that's a video. After that, we went to the Dude Perfect headquarters for the after party. And the first day was easy because it was just a great day. But Brad was going to be tested soon enough. That could be the Discover Connection driven logo. It will happen. This just hasn't caught up yet. I'm already, it's, it's happening. I'm already becoming more athletic. I like rain because now I don't have to take a shower tonight. You're taking a shower tonight, dude. How did you go today? <laughs> Brad. Dude, no! I'm not sharing a hotel room with you anymore if you keep okay, doing this. Okay. What do you mean I'm kidding? It doesn't undo the fart. <laughs> I sucked it back in. <laughs> Get up. Come on, it's another day. Get up, it's a fun day. <laughs> we have to talk about a channel called Discover Connection at around 600,000 subscribers. <laughs> That was you! But these guys have some of the most wholesome content you will ever watch. The channel was created with the goal of reducing divisiveness, with the members essentially leaving their comfort zone in every video just to do nice things for random people. Dude, that's crazy! Where they hosted a massive free Christmas dinner for 50 strangers who were all alone on Christmas. That's crazy. Although until they've experienced the trials of being a bigger channel, uh, Casey Neistat definitely deserves the next Until they experience the trials of being a bigger channel. Hey, don't focus on the, on the bad things you said. Hey, dude, I'm telling you, man, your message is important. Yeah, I feel like I don't, I don't, uh, I don't really notice that much. Maybe I should like take that into consideration a lot more. Yeah, maybe you want you know? to. Maybe I want to. Yeah, instead of should, should is a heavy word. You know? It's like I'm doing something wrong if I should. It's like I haven't been doing it, and I'm like, dang, I want to. Yeah. That feels better. People reveal what they're actually thinking based on the words that they choose. I can see a version of you that is super skilled at this. For you, it's really important to figure out why something bad is happening. And I, I grew up in a, I gotta choose my words carefully. <laughs> Person is still obviously in my life, extreme narcissist. That makes you analyze things so much. Yeah. Where it's like, I can't just let it go. I have to figure out what's happening otherwise. Yeah. It's just like translated into the rest of my life. I was dating this girl who was just like the happiest, most bubbly, beautiful personality that you'd ever meet. And, uh, and just me being in that more negative state, the like, beautiful flower that she was just like wilted. And I had to just like watch that happen. I think you've made a lot of progress. Try to try to accept the feeling. Just yeah. like accept it. Don't try to get out of it. Because <clears throat> there's a part of you that wants to be heard. There's just a lot of emotion coming up. Just feel the emotion. Don't resist it. Nothing makes sense right now. It's just uh, I don't know how to. You usually try to get out of this and make sense of it. What if you try to do nothing? Just sit with it. What happened there? No, it was just like a wave and. It crashed and it's starting to settle. Is that what usually happens? When it gets really bad, usually there's like a problem. I'm stuck until I, I fix the problem. But that's great. You didn't go into that state now. Yeah. Do you ever do any exercises to get into your body? I do like breath work. Yeah. I tend not to do it. I probably should. Breath work? I, I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We set up alarms again to remind us every hour to check in because it's so easy to just forget about it and get stuck in autopilot. Anytime we think one of these thoughts, it strengthens the neural connections in our brains to do that again. So we're building the muscles every time it's a rep. Yeah. Positivity part of my brain is just gonna start bulging out here. So Jake's about to speak on stage. Two years ago, he's in a very different spot and now he's here. I know that guy, I know that guy. I hated what I was doing. Woo! I can do this forever. Yeah! I love you, Jake! Yes, Jake! This is my third time at this conference and it always feels like a big school trip where you get to hang out with all your friends. And then Brad started showing everyone his signature fighting move he would use if he was in the UFC. I have one shot and one shot over. He's convinced it would work every time. Changing your mind and ch changing your thoughts, will that solve the trauma? I mean, Both. it'll have an impact, for sure. I think of it more of like a parasite. It's like it can be removed. It's like scratching at my brain and my brain does something. I don't know. If your subconscious sees this as a parasite and you don't know how to get it out, that's rough. How we phrase things and how we, you know, it creates a reality that our body lives in. What if the problem is that you think you have a parasite, but there isn't a parasite. The parasite is already long gone. It left you when you left the household you grew up in but you're just still operating the same way as if the parasite was inside of you. So when your mind is going in circles, you're looking for the parasite. 
You know I mean, that kind of makes sense. There's this feeling of like, yeah, just looking, searching. It was interesting to see how often I uh, tend to just be in a negative state. I think it'd be interesting to see just where it'll go if I just continue to practice. I appreciate you. Opportunity too. Are we having a moment now? Or a kiss? Hey! Oh! Wait! Probably two years since I benched 225. Oh. Wow, he even spit in my face! So Jake and I are getting ready for the fitness race in December and I'm so grateful for these guys that I can share this journey with. And that's why I'm so excited about building the Driven Community. Because I want you guys to connect with like-minded people as well. Because it's such a common problem, which is something I talked to Giovanni about in our recent community call. I moved uh, in the Netherlands, I'm studying psychology and it can be so lonely and I see myself and I see others and I just cannot uh, connect. go on. I, I've been exactly where you've been. How old are you now? 19. So you're starting early. You're exactly where you need to be. And you know what? I hope it gets more challenging for you. This is the beginning of the movie. I see the difference between me, who I have higher expectations of myself. You can be around people and still feel lonely because you're not actually connecting with them. That started for me when I was around 16, 17. I noticed that I had different values. People I was around, they couldn't connect with that. In fact, they were making fun of it. If you ever feel lonely in a crowd, it's because you're not fully being yourself and you're not connecting with your real self. The way I've solved this problem for me is by building my own group. I created a mastermind group for YouTube creators and I invited five guys and now we're best friends. When you're the one who's organizing something, you connect so much more with people and your network grows so much faster than looking to join something that already exists. Because everyone is waiting to be invited, nobody's inviting others. Thanks so much. I really appreciate your time. Zane from the last episode, making great progress as well. Today is day nine, which is the longest unbroken chain of sobriety from weed that I've had since I started smoking weed. The community continues to grow. And if you're only just hearing about the 90 day goal series, then set a goal now for the rest of the year. You're not late, just join us. So what's the solution to overthinking? Wouldn't it be nice if we could just shut our brains off and take violent action, instead of going in circles and planning and over analyzing, just go and do it. There's a few resources that I'd like to share with you that I wish someone had told me about earlier. Let me show you the best view in Austin and try some funny 360 camera angles while thanking Shopify for continuing to sponsor our videos. So I've recently had some driven hats made and they'll be super easy to sell on Shopify. Does this look like I'm in a video game? <coughs> Shopify makes it super easy to start your own business. Even Jake is using it to sell some shirts. And trust me, if Jake can do it, so can you. Because Jake is a... Uh... What is that? Is that a second design? Whether you're just starting out or you already have a successful business, Shopify supports you with countless tools. It's almost like the world is your oyster. Get it? Because it's like really small and I'm going around it. <laughs> Are you overthinking the name of your business? Use the business name generator. Need to capture some emails? Use Shopify forms. Want to send some email campaigns? Uh... Use Shopify email. Need funding and you're in the US? Shopify Capital, almost there. I've used Shopify when I built and sold my first business. They're an all-in-one commerce platform that allows you to sell online, across all major social media platforms, and in person. So go to shopify.com slash Leon Hendricks, sign up for a free trial, and finally start that thing that you've been putting off. Not too bad. This is one of the best ways to get out of your head. Get into your body, do a hard workout, or for a walk, this is a resource that I wish I'd heard about sooner. It's by the psychiatrist who popularized cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a very effective treatment for all sorts of mental health challenges. It's a very dense book, but I'm gonna summarize what I think is the most important concept for you here, which is the idea of cognitive distortions. It's a fancy way of saying thought patterns that are untrue that make us miserable. And it's a simple equation. You can pretty much measure how happy someone is based on how many of these cognitive distortions they use. So there's 10 of them, but I'll simplify them in a few because a lot of them are very similar. For example, anything that our mind uses to generalize. We have all or nothing thinking, overgeneralization, discounting the positive, mental filter, magnification as well. For example, saying something like, I've completely wasted my life for the last five years. But was it really completely wasted? What about the friends you made, the experiences you had, the skills you learned? Whenever we use the word never, always, all the time, completely, absolutely, it's usually not true. And we don't see things how they actually are, but worse than they are. Emotional reasoning. I feel like a failure, so therefore I am a failure. Whenever you say I should, it's the same as saying I want to feel some guilt and inadequacy. Probably should. I, I want to do that. <laughs> Another big one is personalization where you think you're the only one who's struggling with a problem. Like there's something wrong with me because I'm afraid to talk to strangers. Then when I'm in social situations, I look at Jake and I'm like, dang. 
like, I want to be like that. It brings up more social anxiety in me. I'm like, And you know who also feels like that? Jake. He told me that. He's pushing himself too. We all feel like that. If you don't feel that way, there's something wrong with you. The problem is not that you're afraid to talk to strangers. The problem is that you think it's a problem. What is most personal is most universal. Of course, you can know all this, but still do nothing about it. And I think in that lies the solution to stop overthinking. Number one, reality is really complex and our brain wants to save energy. So it just generalizes and simplifies. And secondly, being hopeful and optimistic is scary because then you have something to lose. What if she likes you? What if this might work? And we'd rather stay at the bottom because climbing up and then falling down seems more painful. Overthinking is just longing for certainty where there is no certainty. And I'm not sure if I should just take a lot of time to think, and I'm like thinking for like two months already, or I should just jump in into something and then like change along the way. What do you think the answer is? I think I should do something. So the magic pill to stop overthinking, for me at least, is realize you won't think your way out of it because thinking itself is the problem and you're only doing it because you're scared and uncertain, and that's okay. Just get going and figure it out along the way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.